Hello again. Um, once again, I haven't moved. Uh, yeah, just uh, picking up from where we left off yesterday. Just quickly, don't want to keep going on about the circuit thing, but one thing they did mention, they said we'd like to be able to see someone who's actually using it, who's doing a multi-drop. So if you're out there and you're doing a multi-drop, if you're doing an Amazon or a Hermes or, have you, you know, please leave me a comment or a number because it would be nice to, for you to do your, not just, not me, someone else to do it because I can't really do that because I'm not Mr. Multi Drop but if you can that'd be brilliant. Uh, right so pushing that over to one side because I'm not about that too much. Um, three reasons, I did a video, three reasons why the CX is better. Now this came up because I was having a conversation with my mate friends, South African friends who rings me from time to time and he said you know the, the wonderful thing about it is it does actually spread your risk. And I thought, well, actually, that's a reasonable point. We should stick that one out there. And I thought, ironically enough, two of the main contributors to the channel are both both professionals that are in the game, are both given two opposite points of view. So I'd like to highlight those. First of all, Ian, my mate, um, the Francis mate, C11 Yan, says, um, the thing he says, I love about the CX, he said, the CX is easy for invoicing. Click print and send a POD in the post or upload, and ultimately that's all they require. That's, you know, get the POD. I, I, what I tend to do is once I've done my paper POD, I scan it on the phone, send it straight. I do the scan rather than the photo, it's much better. Um, and then keep the paper POD, and I now do it. I used to do it myself. There's videos on how to do it yourself, but um, I send it all to Gemma. She prints out hard copies, attaches the hard copy of the PODs, and sends it across the customer, and then it is job done. You just wait to get paid. Um, so that's all I require. He says, with end users, he said, often needs a job number from the person issuing the job, then it needs to get approved by accounts with a purchase order. And each delivery has a purchase order, has a purchase order. So you can have a situation where you've done an awful lot of work for your end user and the invoices say 8K and one job doesn't have a purchase order. So they refuse to pay. Because, oh yeah, but what about this one? He said, end users are just a world of pain. Now, my our end users, I've got to say, are, 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 we're lucky. They're, they're they're small firms. We're constantly in contact with them. Ours are okay, but I can understand. I mean, this guy's two years on down the road from me, much better, much more professional, understands the game much better than I do. So I get that. Um, on the flip side of things, uh, Dolly Dalton out there, hello mate. He says, sorry, disagree. You put credit control system in, and you get a credit report from Dun and Bradstreet, or I assume the guys that they use. Uh, you get shippers on the CX that go bust and start up again. Absolutely no credit control in place. It's stick your finger up in the air and hope for the best. You have no comeback on the CX if the, if the client goes um, bust, it's down to you. Your information, unfortunately, is completely wrong. Not all shippers on the CX are 100% kosher. They continue to pay later and don't pay on the day. It's due, it's due and you end up chasing your own money. Um, I agree with some of that. I mean, yeah, a, a lot of them don't pay when they could. I mean, we use Skipton's, we use Factoring Company, and they've just in, they've just um, introduced a new credit control system, which means that we have this thing called disapproved debt, which is if it goes over when they were supposed to pay, then the factoring company would disapprove the debt. And sometimes it was a bit difficult to chase the debt because you weren't sure which debts are going to be disapproved or not. Now they've put a new system in place where we can see up and coming disapproved debt. So Gemma will ring them and she will go, you owe us money. You're about to go overdue. Pay us. And she's very, very good at that. I, I Again, all I've ever said on my channel, this is my personal experience and how I find it, we get paid. You know, very, very, very rarely does anyone go down or we don't get paid. And if something starts to flag up, if like, you know, if you're doing it, what I will say is if I'm doing a lot of work for one particular customer and we don't know the pedigree, we tend to ease off the gas a bit. Because you go, we don't want to do, you don't want to have too many eggs in one basket. You don't want to do too much work for one guy if you don't know the score. And even the ones we didn't know the score, most of them have all panned out to be all right. Once again, just my personal experience, you do you. Um, domain name guy says, uh, the CX and recruitment agency are virtually the same. The driving industry went down the owner driver route, um, which made drivers choose either buy a van and choose their own work or do exactly the same job for an agent or for an agency, but driving the company vehicle with the CX, the driver chooses which work they want to do and what price they want. Um, for an agency driver, you decide yes or no, whether to, to accept what the company wants to send you. The only difference is that as a driver and a van uses the same van, whereas an agency driver might use the, the, um, the agency's vehicle. The beauty of both is that you only have a loyalty 
to um, the agency's customer or the CX customer till the end of the job. A few hours um, in and the agency driver, when, when the agency driver finishes his shift or when you've done the CX job, it is job done. Yeah, I kind of take that. Um, it, there is a certain freedom to it. Like I said, it is a bit of a double sword. There is a freedom to it, which is both a blessing and a curse because you don't know what you're going to get, which means it might be wonderful or it might not. <laughs> That's kind of the size of things. Uh, W388AY1. Another droid. Need a better name. <laughs> it's not Star Wars. Um, no such thing as backload, in my opinion, Pete. If you want it moved, you should pay the right rate. We run empty from St. Ives to Tiverton. Uh, back home, don't even look for loads going home because it's nothing but aggravation. I can see that. I think it depends also on the length of the, the journey. If I'm only going to go 20 miles, I ain't going to look for a turnload. It can't be worth the grief. If I'm going to go over 100 miles, sometimes 200 miles, it seems, it seems environmentally unfriendly to run a vehicle for 200 miles empty. Having said that, it depends on for me now. A lot of the time, it ends on on time. I think, oh, I can fit that one in, and then you realise you can't. So you've got to be clever about this one. And yeah, th th I think there is um, a way up to be made between the extra money you're going to get for driving that load home and the extra grief it's going to cause you. And Ian with two eyes, Merrick turns around. He says, "I think um, you subscribe to the CX." Once and you have no way of knowing how busy your home location is, and after that, it doesn't. If it doesn't work, you might as well move into HGV. Is that I mentioned the current there's seven seventy six thousand national shortage of HGV drivers apparently um, on the Facebook career group, and a load of HGV drivers have said that hours are long, pay is rubbish. Um, but how can the hours be long if drivers are regulated to the amount you can drive? We're regulated to the amount we can drive and the amount we can work. But I can drive. Um, on certain days for 10 hours and work for 15. It can be a long day. Um, and the pay is poor compared to non-CX self-employed career. As a CX self-employed career, you're, you, you might be lucky to earn one, one, one and a half thousand pound a month um, from clients, and the, that's before fuel, maintenance, depreciation, tax, and all that. As you say, Pete, the only way for it to pay is to get your own end users. I certainly, I mean, I can't say enough, end users are the way forward. And also you say, once you subscribe to the CX, I'm gonna do a video on that actually, about the idea of, you know, subscribing to the CX. I don't think, you know, I think that there are warnings to be made, you know, about how, what you should do. So I will do your video on that, Ian. Ian and I'm looking forward to seeing your video with the Timmy Mallet Hammer. Uh, and then we're on the miscellaneous. Uh, Dominic, Dominic Townsend says, if I can't use my cars, no claims, uh, does that mean I don't have to mention my car's insurance claims? I think what you do when you sign up for insurance, you answer all the questions I ask you honestly. And if they say to you, have you got, have you had an accident in the last five years? Have you got no claims by saying, you tell them the truth. Because if you don't, they can have you. If they do, if you do, tell them the truth, and they, I wouldn't volunteer it particularly. But I would rather be up front and know that I'm covered. I, I, we got torpedo once when I was on the market. Um, my, my, my mate uh, Nigel, a guy's insurance claim, drove into him, then claimed for whiplash on seven people. And I had to do an interview with the insurance guy. I'd just had a little chat about what happened. He said, as an insurance company, if we know that you're lying to us, we'll still take your money. He said, if you want to pay us £100 a month or whatever it is for your insurance... We'll take it. But the problem is the, the, the second you have an accident and you go, right, pay up now, you'll go, no, because you turned around and said this. You said you had no points, but we know you've got six. So I would be honest with them because otherwise you're just doing dead money. You're, you're paying for insurance, which actually isn't insurance. So, yeah, I would, I would always be up front. Um, Lee Munn says, ah, oh, yeah, we, I went into British Sugar. And the lady on there, the Scottish lady, she's absolutely lovely um, on the sort of, on the gate. Uh, Lee Munn said, I met Jane loads of time. Didn't know her name was Jane. Um, she's a lovely lady. I go there a few times a year and have to sit the test every year. We had to do a test to get in. Um, they install their photocopiers. What are they photocopying? Chemicals? <laughs> I'm sure they have, like, I guess there's probably, you know, paperwork in every job, isn't there? Unfortunately. Paperwork in this job. Um, Steve Campbell. He said, oh, it's back to POA. I suppose it's daft. Um, I thought POA would be if you were available but doing nothing. Use POA when I was being paid by the hour and um, off the card and not pay for breaks. POA does my head in. And I've, I've recently found out as well, POA doesn't even exist in Europe. 
There are three, there are three settings in Europe. You're either driving, or you're doing other work, or you're resting. This POA thing is only a UK thing, and it just messes with my taco head. And I've, I've had a chat with, as I said to Daniel, I said, to Daniel, let's just do this one, I'll come back to that one. Um, Nima Transport says, hi Pete. POA is good for prolonging your working time. Say for example, you stay for 35 minutes on POA, you can extend your working time by 35 minutes over six hours, but it has no, it has no effect on driving time. This is a header, I'm telling you, trucks are involved. Um, I use POA mostly if I'm loaded on, on site, and they say you have to wait on a waiting bay until they're ready to load me, then I put it on POA. Um, the thing about this, it just goes on, it just it starts, it just, in fairness, it's like a little call of duty. You know, it's sort of, like, oh, where's the DC? Where's the DCI? Where's the DCIP? AS, we need, I, I need to know, if so facto, ASAP. And like, you can get absolutely lost in these terms. The thing about POA is technically you can only put it on POA if you know how long you're going to be there for. So they go, right, we don't need you till three o'clock. Now you can put it POA. Our first driver shown that never used POA. Her cards always came in completely spotless. I find it a massive headache. And I, I, I defy that there is a thing that if you're loading, uh, well, heads up, if you're going to load a Lidl's or an Audi um, on a distribution centre, they want you to tip yourself. The DVSA will wait outside these firms. And if you've got it on break, when you're running in and out of the back of a truck with a pallet truck, the second you pull it out, they go, you're on other work. And that's fair enough, because if you're, if you're helping load boxes into the back of the van, or you're strapping steel or something like that, that's other work. But I can't understand how if I'm on a door for an hour waiting to get unloaded, and I'm sitting in the passenger seat watching videos on my phone, that's other work. Because if I was in a company, if I was working in an office, and I was sitting there at my desk with my feet up watching Netflix videos, and the boss came round and said to me, what are you doing? And I went, I'm working. As a boss, I think I'd fire that employee. So I spoke to my transport manager about it. He says it's a grey area. So you decide what you want to do. Again, I'm not telling anybody what to do. If you're on a bay, if you're on a door, you decide whether you put it on hammers. You decide whether you can put it on um, brake. You've got to know that if you pull out that site and there's a policeman out the side who wants to see your card, you've got to be able to justify your actions. And I, if it ever happens to me, I'll let you know whether or not I come unstuck. But at the moment, the grey area, I, I do find it a bit mystifying, if I'm honest. Um, uh, domain name guys says, um, oh yeah, we, uh, the Transport Exchange, which owns the, the CX and the Haulage Exchange, also has its own YouTube channel. He said their videos might be interesting to those on the CX, who are on the CX thinking about joining the HX, um, handy tips and videos on rules and regulations, that kind of thing. Um, he said, oh, and a good point about because I did the point about turning up in a van. So yeah, apparently the CX have got their own video. I don't watch everybody. There's loads of other people making videos out there. It's not all about me. I ain't McFly. You watch them all make your own mind up, you know? Um, he said, that's a good point because I said about van on the run. Who's got his own video, please watch him. He's, he's out there doing the thing. He says... Um, Good point about turning up in a van. Van on the run does it. He does the tramping thing. And there are lots of people that are, you know, that are out there. They do videos about the real life on the CX. About, you know, they'll do a video of, I picked up here, I did that, I did these boxes. My videos aren't like that. My videos are more about, you know, behind the scene, background. I, I, there are loads of people, they're track driving videos where they, they'll say, well, I picked up a load. And then you watch 15 minutes from driving down the road with music going on. I do that on a daily basis. Drive down the road looking at the road with music going on. I don't want to do that in my spare time. But if that's what that's for you, crack on, please. Absolutely. Um, he says, but, but Van on the road, he does the tramping thing. He does the behind the scenes things. He'll show you what, what it's like to really run on the CX, which maybe I don't do. Um, and he's got a brand new van, which has got full capacity tonnage. Give the guy a check out. He's a nice guy. Yeah? Van on the run. Watch his videos, please. Um, he also says, which says the, co the commercial van speed limit on a single carriageway is 50 miles per hour. I know I've got three points to prove it when I was doing 60. Yes, it is. On motorways, um, I think vans can do 70. Anything over three and a half tonne is 60. And on single carriageways, we're 50. Other than that, we're kind of the same as cars. Give or take, I think. Once again, probably wrong. Ian Williams, this is Reset Nev. He says, you mentioned spending money on things uh, all the time, like your phone, as I have, yeah. Uh, he says, maybe you should consider adopting the same principle with the sat-nav. I've been using the Snooper sat-nav dedicated to trucks for the last 20 years. Yes, they may be expensive. I paid £400 for my last one, but I've, got, I've had the same one for around eight years before changing to the new version. 
working working out this equates to less than a pound a week. Um, as yet, it's never taken me down um, weight limited streets with width restriction roads, low bridges, etc. I went to boot. You get free map dates for life for, from Snoop and the O website. Cheers for now. Love the vids. Keep them coming. That's good about that. The thing I've got, I'm, I'm not averse to spending money. I know that the, the people have said, you know, there's an argument, the Tom Tom Pro. But when I go on Amazon, the first five reviews, one star. One star was rubbish. I'm in a coach. Four times this week, it's trying to take me through a seven foot width restriction around a seven foot. So I don't mind spending it. Admittedly, I did just buy a sat nav for one of our other trucks. Um, got fantastic reviews. Um, it was 85 quid, 84 pounds. Um, it's now in the boot of Al's car because he said it was a real pain to program. And I went, well, why is it in the boot of your car? Why don't you give it to me and I'll try it in the truck and see how it goes. I've also re-banged on with um, road, road Lords, whatever it is, that to the free sat nav one, because a couple of times recently I've been kind of Guildford Way and I've been down um, the southeast of England and there was a lot of, you know, unsuitable for HGVs, narrow, low bridges and stuff like that. And it didn't let me down this time. So... I'll probably have a much better idea. In a seven and a half ton, you can get away with um, a lot more than you can in an 18 ton. So this is something I'm going to come to in later date. But once again, Ian, thanks for your advice, mate. I'm not, I don't mind spending the money. I just don't want to spend the money on something that turns out to be no good. And it's, oh, I don't, yeah, I'm a bit, mm, you know. Um, Steve Campbell says, I've got a Mio, which I presume is another sat nav. I've had it for a few years now, 20 quid off Amazon. It's a car nav, but you can change it to truck and enter your vehicle's weight and dimensions. And if you're carrying toxic weight, still working. I say, I don't know. When I do actually get involved, I'll give you full speed. But at the moment, flicking between ways and that Road Lords thing is kind of working for me. Uh, domain name guy says football radio is better than music I grew up as a market trader from the age of 5 I was going with my dad cleaning market traders cars from the age of 11 I was selling Jeff Loves Banjo Party on Milton Keynes Market when all my mates when my dad's when my mates dads were taking them to football my dad took me to market when my mates were going to football I was standing on a market as a re result of which all sport without fail has passed me by I don't watch any sport whatsoever my wife says it's the best thing about me um Adam Luther says, I'm a bit worried about this O-license stuff, uh, but some comfort can be found in this article. So if you go to the video, Adam Luther has done a link. Um, I, as far as the O-license stuff is regarding vans, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't see how it's going to be that straightforward. There are lots of vans out there that currently don't have tacos. So what they're going to do, you go, right, okay, well, you've all got to get one fitted now. Can you retrofit all vans? I don't think it's something. I think it's something we might have to worry about in the future. But I don't think it's the immediate future. I kind of would. Again, I'm very much across that bridge when you come to it, sort of guy. So, but watch your space. I'm sure that you guys will keep me informed. Um, Robert Franklin says, uh, "Hi Pete, I'm not in the industry yet. I'm looking at starting when my current job finishes in May. Really enjoyed the videos. Very informative. Thank you, Ian. thank you, Robert. Uh, just to know on jobs to Norwich, Big Beardy does them uh, to get home. Apparently, their COVID test they don't pay much. Norwich is a bit of a singularity, a quantum singularity. Certain areas are very difficult to get out of. So, if, but if you're going home." You've got more chance. Again, it's not the busiest of areas. If you if you stick inside the square, you're kind of all right. Outside the square, Norwich, anything past Bristol, Wales, not so easy. I always struggle with the M4 corridor. I just struggle. Uh, if you stick to the main bit, you know, you sort of Manchester, Sheffield, Leeds, anything down the M1, that kind of area, you've got a lot more chance. That's the size of things. Uh, Chris C, uh, once again because I said about planes uh, not being able to auto land. He said planes have auto have, have had um, auto land for a long time now. Um, first one, I think, was Trident back in the 1970s. So once again, only going to prove that most of the stuff that I say is wrong, or at least large inaccurate. Please take it with a pinch of salt and make your own mind up. Steve Campbell says they have already, once again, <laughs> uh, they've had tacos in three and a half ton vans for years now as they need tacos for putting a trailer. Um, some vans, maybe certain vans do. Most of the vans, most of the three and a half vans, in fact, all of the three and a half vans that I've ever driven have never had a taco. And in my life, I have driven at least two dozen vans. Going back to the very early LTs, we had six on the road, and I drove all of those. They never had a taco. None of my Lutons have had tacos. Our, you know, they, you know, 
maybe certain ones have to have tacos fitted if they're putting trailers, but on the whole, it's not a standard thing, I would say. Um, and then he also says, I've got a new job starting as um, an employee on the 5th of April, class one for Hawthorne Logistics in Washington. Well done, my friend. He says, and now, how can I get rid of piles? I'm in agony. I know nothing about that. This is not a medical channel. I imagine you sit on a rubber ring. I think that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Okay, I have an operation. My mate Andy Adam, apparently they are horrible. I do feel for you, my friend. And finally, um, Farina Alberto says, it's CX, is CX for class one or class two? The CX will show you any job up to, and I think including seven and a half tonne. Um, after that, you join the HX, which shows jobs seven and a half tonne up to six axle trailer. It's not that much dearer. So there we go. And finally, in conclusion, um, Lee Adam says, because I said about the hard hat, I once, I once guy turned around and told me I had to have a hard hat to climb in the back of my lorry. What's going to fall on my head? The roof's there. Um, he says, you don't want to be climbing on the back of trucks. Hard hat won't help you feel off um, oh, when you need to wash your truck. Yes, I do. I pulled in the truck wash only the other day and the guy went, it's not open yet, we're waiting for the water to build up. What I tend to do, or what I would do, is wait until it rains really heavily and then I get out with me, me sort of Mac on and get the brush and brush it down. And that takes most of the mud off, but it hasn't rained really heavily for a long time, so I did take it to the truck wash, but it was shut. Um, and finally, Chris C says, I'm the country music thing. So I don't mind a bit of country music. I do look at Bo Iris and um, the odd person there. What happens if you play country music backwards? You get your wife back, your trailer back, your dog back, and your job back. da 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 That's it. That's Sunday with Q&A done. Like I say, hopefully I'll be able to do that one going out tomorrow about, um, you know, your questions that you kindly submitted that we were going to ask the CX, but they, you know, reluctant, you know, you know gracefully declined. Um, and in the meantime, I hope you're continuing to enjoy the rest of your bank holiday weekend and taking care, but not taking money. <laughs> <laughs>